For people who want to know what is the Keith Angie Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a word of disability, I can style them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of word and disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them. Stem out to something. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the one and only Keith Angie Network. It is episode 943. That's right, 943. I have not just one, but two professional actors on the show today. Before we get to that and before we hear from our guests, first thing I want to say, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This will be also be available on LinkedIn, Twitter, and all social medias. Well, with that being said, let's hear from our guests when we come back. My name is Evan Feldman. I'm an actor, uh, producer, writer, X-Men Children of the Atom, uh, non-endorsed fan series, and I'm being interviewed today uh, on the Keith Andrews Show, um, and had a fantastic time. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. I'm Walter Duckworth, and I'm here today on the Keith Andrew Network. I'm an actor, model, singer, stuntman, voiceover talent, and now a producer. And we're about to start producing a film called The Ageless that's going to be epic. And so I'll keep you all posted on all that. We're set to be filming in August and I can't wait to start. Walter, I'm gonna ask you the first question. And Evan, it's the same question for you. So Walter, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I'm, I was a former CEO. I owned a company called Chemtroll Environmental and uh, I had a son in 2003 and he regressed into autism after he was vaccinated and it kind of changed my whole life. I had to quit work, become Mr. Mom, stay at home dad. A lot of people in my family got sick and I had to become a caregiver. And that's kind of what led me into acting because I was stuck at home a lot. And, you know, I had never even thought about being an actor. People in high school used to say, hey, you ought to be an actor because, you know, I was just kind of a nut. I always was going around speaking in different accents and things like that. And so I thought I'd give it a try. And, you know, it started going pretty good for me. And uh, I started doing some indie films and I got picked up by an agent out of Los Angeles and they kind of mentored me and they opened up a division in Atlanta because I live in Georgia. And uh, I've been in, you know, over 50 films and, I don't know, I lose count of TV shows. I've got another booking coming up at the end of this month as playing a detective in a TV show. And I've also expanded my resume into producer. I do my own stunts and, you know, I sang in nightclubs for about 20 years. I did that for a while to put bread on the table while I was taking care of my family. And um, I have never done any writing as far as film work, but you know, I'm not discounting that too. I might do that. But one of my partners is she's a brilliant writer. And so um, when you got somebody that can write that good in your corner, then you really don't need to write. So I've just been trying to cast people for the film and, you know, we have locations taken care of and everything. And so we're hoping to start rolling in August. No, so that's a really good. But I didn't mean to interrupt. I do apologize. Oh, that's fine. No problem. I start rambling anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have some great ideas off the air. And Evans, what can you tell us about yourself? Same exact question. Can you hear us, Evan? Nope. We can see you, but we can't hear you. All right, so while we wait for that, uh, what were some of the films uh, that you were in? Were you in like um, any hit TV shows, any hit films? Well, TV shows, I've mainly been in like investigation discovery shows. And I did get booked for a recurring role in an NBC show, but I had to turn that down because my wife was sick. Um, I played um, General William Howe in uh, Bill O'Reilly's Legends and Lies, the second season, where um, it was about the American Revolution. And I recently was in Kelsey Grammer's Historic American Battles, playing the same character, William Howe. And um, I've been in uh, probably 
my favorite role I played was Governor William Tryon in a movie called The Price of Freedom. I like playing British characters, you know. I'm Southern and whatnot, but I do do a lot of different accents. And so, you know, I like playing roles like that. I played gangsters a lot. I recently helped a friend of mine produce a film about human trafficking, and that should be out soon. The film's all edited, but they're still working on the sound. And and uh, he just graduated college. It was a film he was doing while he was in college. And so hopefully we'll do some more films coming up soon. No, yeah, absolutely. And you were also in the film of the, uh, Fatal Attraction. Yeah, that's um, one of the investigation discovery uh, shows. I was in that um two episodes of that actually. And then I was in uh, murder calls. I played a guy called Arthur Bernie that his wife killed him. I played in swamp murders and I was the killer in it. And i um, trying to think I was in, I was in snap killer couples a few times, but those weren't speaking roles. You're just kind of like an extra on there. So I don't really count those too much because, you know, I don't like really doing extra or background work. I like doing speaking roles and, I've got kind of a rough voice and a little bit of a rough demeanor, so I typically get cast as bad guys. <laughs> but I am playing a cop coming up, you know, who's a good cop, so <laughs> it'll be a change for me. And in the film that my two partners, Jana Beeson and Debbie Robillard, are producing, I'm going to play a bad guy in that, too. No, absolutely. Now, I'm just looking at your profile right now, and you're also on Vampire Diaries. Hmm. What can yeah, you that tell was our um, audience about your experience on that? Well, when I first got into acting, um, I met a lady named Marty Cherix Keener, and she was the casting director for Vampire Diaries. And she needed Civil War reenactors. And I know a bunch of them because there's a couple of battlefields near my house. And so I got the reenactors together and we went and did some flashback scenes with them. And then I got cast on there on a couple of other walk on roles and, um, you know, had a couple of lines. But uh, that was one of the very earliest things that I did in acting. No, absolutely. And it was but, a fun show to work on. Everybody was really nice. And, uh, man, they had awesome food there. I mean, that was one of the <laughs> the perks. I mean, they had the spread when you work on Vampire Diaries. <laughs> well, I, I will leave off on that point because I do want to talk to you about that. But, Evan, did you, did you get your mic working? Uh, I believe so. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Um, All right. I completely apologize, you know, tech these days. Uh, anyways... Um, yeah, my name is Evan, Evan Feldman. Um, have Asperger's, was diagnosed at a very early age, and I am an actor. Uh, been in multiple uh, stage productions here in New England, and recently ventured into film work uh, the past three or so years. Uh, and uh, I've also ventured into, I'm now producing, producing and writing my own web series, which I suppose I'm also casting in, as well as performing it. <laughs> so uh, I do a lot. No, for sure. You know, were you ever in any hit films, any hit TV shows? Uh, only in background roles, um, but uh, I was an extra um in the chris evans uh defending jacob um i was uh an extra in a made for disney uh channel holiday movie um yeah trying to break out uh outside of being just an extra though no absolutely and now Walter let's go back to where the question i left off you mentioned they had great food on Vampire Diaries. It's funny you should mention that. Did you eat the food hot or cold? The reason I mentioned that is there's a video about the Big Bang Theory, how they always ate cold food and they were not allowed to eat food while they were doing their skits. Was that the same thing for Vampire Diaries? No, we, um, it just depended on the situation because like um, when we were filming in the studio and stuff, then, yeah, we would all take a break at the same time and we would eat hot food fresh. And then there was one night we worked and it was probably 30 degrees outside and it was a Civil War flashback scene. And we were out in the woods and it was freezing cold and they were bringing around Mexican food on hot plates to everybody while we were in the field. So we just ate right there on the scene. 
So, you know, a lot of times it just depends on the circumstance, but yeah, most of the time it's hot, but then some of the indie flicks and stuff you work on, you just get cold pizza. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about, what can you tell us about your experience about working with Bill? Or did you work with him personally? Did he ever get to meet Bill O'Reilly or were he does on the legends and wise? No, I didn't meet him personally. Um, there was a company called Lionheart Filmworks and they did most of the film and all that stuff. And, you know, Bill O'Reilly's parts were just, you know, cut in later. So no, I never met him and I didn't meet Kelsey Grammer either. We shot on locations. A lot of times we were like actually at the John Marshall house and, you know, we were on, you know, some historic battlefields. And uh, so it was neat because I like history. And so um, that's one reason I like to play historical characters. And, you know, we got to see a lot of neat stuff and it was pretty freezing cold. A lot of those nights working on Legends and Lies, it was deep snow. That was when I was thankful to have all those heavy British clothes on. Cause, <laughs> man, that wool was thick. <laughs> and then you got the big powder wig on and all that. And if it was summertime, it would have been really hot. Well, I don't know that um, Hasidics walk around wearing all black try, uh, for uh they wear their hats, they wear their jackets, they wear drench coats. Oh, it doesn't matter if it's 90 degrees outside, they're dr dressed head to toe. So if I get, you're used to the heat, I guess you can take it wherever, right? Yeah, I live in central Georgia and it's pretty hot here. And <laughs> I uh, like to work out a lot. And I usually work out in the hottest part of the day because I figure that keeps my stamina up. And a lot of times on acting sets, you have to be there like 16 hours and you know sometimes you have to do some pretty hard grueling work and sometimes you're out there freezing too like for example when i was on uh the first time i was on swamp murders i was playing a guy on the beach in a bathing suit in a lounge chair and they had to shovel the snow away from me to make it look like summer and you know i'm sitting out there freezing in a bathing suit and with all the um, sun reflection from the snow and it being winter, I wasn't tan, man, I got sunburned bad. <laughs> so it could be a hazardous job too. <laughs> you know, it's funny you should mention that. I remember I worked at a kiosk and I was outside and I'm like, oh, it's gonna be like 80, high 80s, maybe 90s. That's okay, I'm in the shade. And I came home, my parents were like, holy shit, what happened to you? Oh, do you, don't, do you like my tan? Tan? <laughs> You have a second degree burn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was no fun. But um, Evans, I want to ask you, or because the next question is for both of you, about disabilities. With everything that you accomplished in your life, in your career, do mm -hmm. you find yourself to be an inspiration for people with disabilities who can reach their dreams and break into the entertainment world? Um, sure. I'll, I'll start, I guess. Um, I, I mean, I certainly hope so. Um, honestly, mo the majority of the time when I'm working or applying to roles or just living my life the best way that I can, um, my, it's kind of on the third or fourth pillar in terms of inspiring others. But I mean, I think at the end of the day, we all want to be inspirational, right? And God knows I faced my share of doubters and people t trying to tell me my entire life what I could and could not do, and I showed all of them. So if I can inspire and show others who are dealing with the same uh, conflicts, it, you know, to not to worry about it so much and to continue to pursue their dreams, then... Honestly, I can't think of anything better than that. Absolutely. Walter, same as that question, have you ever worked with people with disabilities? Oh, yeah, lots of times. I mean, I'm on the board of directors. Um, I'm not very active anymore because my wife got cancer five years ago. and She's had it three times in a row. She's doing well now. But um, we started a support group when my son was diagnosed with autism. And, uh, you know, it kind of grew. And we you know, go to all the events, we have fundraisers and, and I mentor a lot of other actors. I mean, I try to head people in the right direction because there's so many shady people in this business that try to take advantage of people. And um, 
So I try to be a mentor. Like I got people coming over tomorrow to help them self tape, you know, because that's an art to that. And it's not easy to do because I know when I first got an agent and went from doing indie films and have to step up into network TV, I didn't book anything for a year because I had to learn the art of video auditioning. Because when you go in in person, you know, you can kind of sell your personality and all that. And when you're taping self tapes, you know, you tape from here to the top of your head. You have to tell the story with your in your eyes you have to make it really believable and it's a you know it's really subjective and you know even a good seasoned actor books like one in a hundred auditions they say is a good average so I guess I have a little bit better than good average but yeah that's kind of my thing I like to mentor people my son's been through a lot he had major health problems when he um regressed into autism and we've done chelation on him all kinds of you know occupational therapy speech therapy he's still nonverbal, but he's doing what's called rapid prompt method rpm therapy now learning to type and he's really mm -hmm. smart you know he knows how to do math he can communicate but he just doesn't use his mouth you know he can type or he points to letter boards and spells words and um you know i've just always had a heart for mentoring people and you know i'm very fortunate i'm a super healthy person i'm 57 years old i do crossfit i run i can walk on my hands i do my own stunts and you know, I feel really blessed because of that. And so, you know, that's why I try my best to take care of my family. And I feel like I've kind of got a special guardian angel because I quit my job 18 years ago and have never really had a real job since then. I just do odd jobs or acting jobs and all that, but I'm still in my house. And, you know, when I first started acting, people thought I had lost my mind. You know, I was like 48 <laughs> years old. My family thought I was crazy. I don't mean my immediate family, my wife and children, but you know, like, you know, my big family, my sisters, mom and dad, all that, which my parents are deceased now. But, you know, the only person that really supported me besides my wife was my mother believed in me. And, you know, other actors that, you know, I met in class and stuff, you know, a lot of those, you know, would tell me, hey, you know, you've got a, a certain thing about you. You know, you need to really go with this because there's times, you know, you'll feel like quitting because it's a tough mm -hmm. business. I mean, you'll take audition after audition after audition. And I mean, you can ask Evan, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. and I really admire you, dude, because, um, you know, a lot of people that have Asperger's because I, I have some in my family. My son is more severe on the autism spectrum. You know, they are really shy, antisocial, and they don't want to get out there and put themselves out there. Heck, I know people that aren't on the spectrum that, you <laughs> know, I try to pump up to do stuff because I see they got talent and they just, oh, I'm going to do it later and whatnot, you know, so man, you know, hats off to you, brother. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Well, this question's actually for both of you. I'm going to pass it over to you. you can, Evan, you can ask Walter questions. And Walter, you can ask him. Evan's any questions. But the question I want to ask both of you. Actually, you know what? I'm going to hold on to that question. Evan, do you have any questions you want to ask either of us? Uh, uh, not a question, just a uh, wanted to completely agree basically <laughs> with what he just said which is it is a lot of work and i've had so many people when i tell them um that i'm an actor for a living it, you know oh that's cool how do i get into it whatever and i can just it's funny by the third time some stranger has asked you that question there's a look in their eyes and you can tell if they're asking because they're genuinely interested or if they're asking because they just think it's a, the quickest, most direct route to, you know, mansions in the hills and all of that kind of stuff. And to those people, I always like, you have no idea how much hard work goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, um, all the additions, all the cold reads, all the never hearing backs. Um, yeah. And uh, also, I wanted to quickly thank you for the compliment. Um, it again i've had it probably sounds like your son just got it uh which is very unfortunate um sorry to hear that but yeah i've had it for the majority of my life um and learning not to be shy learning to look in directly into other people's eyes all of that stuff that you were referring to you know it's a skill it for people on this spectrum you kind of have to learn to do it and sort of suck it up yeah, I can be oh, yeah. I can be late because I'm on the spectrum. Sometimes not to go too deep into it because this is not about me. This is about you guys, but I am on the spectrum of uh, being autistic, 
Um, along other things, I mentioned it through other episodes, but I, I, I'm not taking any time away from you guys. But uh, Walter, did you have any questions for me or Evans? Well, um, you know, uh, what made you decide to become a talk show host? Mm. <laughs> Good question. Well, long story short is I got tired of using excuses. I used to call it the boomerang. You know, I throw it and I used to say, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. I'm on the spectrum of being retarded. I read and learn at a fifth grade high school level. People will feel sorry for me. I can use that for my ben uh, benefits. But then as the boomerang comes back, you just realize you whacked yourself upside the head because you just labeled yourself as an influence. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, why should we give this to him? You just said you can't read and write. Um, mm -hmm. You weren't at this type of level. You weren't at this. So, yes, it's okay to say you have a disability. But instead of using it as a crutch and saying, I can't do this, I can't do that, you should prove, and I learned from the hard way, you, I will prove to you with a disability, I can still amount to something and do the same type of work that you do. It may be a scale back, but I will make the same exact impression that anyone out there that does. All you need is an opportunity. Yep, and I'm proud of you for taking it. Yeah. No, like I said, a, a lot of people wouldn't, you know, a lot of people live under a spirit of fear and um, that's just something I've never given into, you know, I mean, it's easy to do that because life can get you down, beat you up sometimes, you know, but, you know, um, I'm just, you know, glad for you that you're out there doing something and, um, you know, I'll be glad to help you promote you any way I can. And if you want to, you know, interview my two partners in this film production business, actually there's more than that, but three of us, well, actually, four of us actually kind of started the thing. It's a long story, and I won't get into all that. But um, I could hook you up with my friends. Um, one of them is a really good book author. She's already done one film that was based on her book, and we're about to do the second. And um, I'll send you that in a private message, and, uh, and I'll tell them about you. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I do have some great ideas for you guys off the air. But Evans, I want you to be completely honest. When I first approached you to be a guest in my talk show, what was your honest first reaction? What made you say yes? And for people out there that don't know anything about the Keith Engine Network, mm. how what would you say to say, you know what? He's not a scam artist. He's for real. Uh Okay, great questions. Um, so first off, I completely agree uh, that so many people do live their entire lives in fear and it is the easier route to go. Um, I have tried the majority of my life not to do that. I'm the kind of person who when I fall down, I immediately get back up and try again and try again and try again. So when presented with opportunities, instead of saying no, which is the easier option, I, I usually try to say yes. So, to be honest, um, I, you sent me a link to your Facebook page. I quickly checked it out. I didn't know that much, but you know, you, you told me a little bit about what your show's about, and I liked what I heard or rather read, and I thought, yeah, that this is something that I'd love to be a part of. And you know, checked out your YouTube page, and it. You know, today and other times, you've had some really amazing guests on. Um, so definitely not a scam. <laughs> I can testify to that. No, a lot of people are like, oh, what are you trying to sell me? I'm not, well, I'm trying to sell myself, <laughs> but I'm not mm. selling you anything. So, and once it's all, okay, you know, oh, I see you have a mutual friend. Oh, mm -hmm. well, if he did it, then obviously he, you're, you're real. Yeah, and it's kind of, but there's so many fake people out there, and the yeah. internet it's a blessing and a curse. Unfortunately, for the most part, it's a curse because you have a lot of con artists out there and a lot of BSers. But you should, that makes the point. You should work 10 times harder to make the statement of saying you're real, mm -hmm. give them an opportunity. And Walter, what about you? When I first approached you, 
Well, you know, I was like, you know, I'm pretty much open to anything, but I always check it out. And the first thing I saw that you had interviewed uh, Kelly Young Silva, and she's a friend of mine. She runs Words in Motion Acting Studio in Atlanta, and she's a real good girl. And I was like, well, if Kelly likes him, he must be all right. <laughs> no, absolutely. And now for a question for both of you real fast, how can our fans and listeners follow you on social media and what's coming up on the horizon? Walter, I'm going to start off with you. Well, um, my Facebook page is Walter Robert Duckworth, and then I have two actor pages associated with that and a skincare page and a health care products page. <laughs> and then on Instagram, I'm under Walter Duckworth, and then I have one page that's called Actorgram Duck, and I only put like pictures from film sets and stuff on there. And I'm cast for a TV show that's supposed to start filming the end of this month, but I can't announce that until, you know, it's wrapped because that's just part of the deal. Mm -hmm. And then we're working on a project called The Ageless. That's the um, project that um, me and my producer partners are working on. And um, the book is about to be published with the same name, The Ageless. And that's going really well. Like I said, we've got a, a friend that has pitched it to some people at Netflix and they like the storyline and they, you know, has said, <clears throat> excuse me, had some suggestions. The script's been rewritten a few times, but the final script is done now. And so right now we're about to find out probably this week if we're getting our funding and um, then we're ready to roll. We're hoping to be filming by August. We already have locations. We already have, you know, um, a budget. We have, people in place to build the sets we have a fantastic director who's also the dp on the show better call saul um our uh, dp on our film is going to be a fella who was the uh, i don't know how to pronounce his last name his first name's nathan i think it's harsgard or something like that but he was the dp on the disney avatar films mm. and then we have an editor on board that is going to, I mean, that did like Deadpool and a lot of the, you know, Marvel type movies. And so, you know, we've just got some really great people on board. And um, so, you know, the footage ought to be epic. The story's awesome. And I can't wait to start on that, you know, because it'll be my second, you know, job as a producer. It'll be the biggest project I've ever been part of producing. Um, the second biggest film I was ever in was a movie with Burr Reynolds called Elbow Grease that a friend of mine, Jason Shirley, did. And that was probably the fattest check I ever made as an actor. But that's been, I think we did that in 2013, but it was about six years before it came out because he went back and forth with the distributors and they, you know, but, you know, it all got worked out and the film is out. You can watch it on Amazon Prime and I think a couple other streaming networks. And it goes under two titles. It goes under An Innocent Kiss and under Elbow Grease. And, and that's a long, another story, but it, it's the same film. <laughs> so if you see two IMDb credits on there, they got the same cover. It's the same film. It's just under two different names. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Evans? Uh, well, I'm glad that you went first because uh, I... Just starting out, I only have a couple. Um, I'm on Facebook under Evan Feldman. Um, I have uh, a dedicated acting Instagram account, which is Evan F, as in Frank, act. Uh, and then I have uh, an Instagram page all set up. Again, I'm working on uh, a non-endorsed fan series. Um, we, uh, we also have budget, directors, cast, we have everything lined up. We're currently working on funding. Um, and that is over at X-Men Children of the Atom series. No, very cool. Now, I, I do have a couple of questions for you guys off the air. But wrapping up, if you're watching on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, leave some feedback. Definitely we'll read it on the next episode. This will be aired on LinkedIn and on twitter so follow us on all social medias for wrapped up it was a real honor and privilege having both of you as a guest and remember june 10th at 8 p.m eastern i would love to have you guys to be a part of it it's my nine year anniversary everyone can watch it on facebook and youtube and all social medias with that being said until we meet again thank you and catch you later